Perfect. And I want to make sure. Beautiful. All right, great. Okay, so thank you for being here, Emma. Uh, I want to introduce um, Emma to everybody. Emma Lefkowitz is, she's actually known as the queen of farming. She's a real estate agent in San Diego who specializes in, has a massive farm in Scripps Ranch. And um, you know what, actually, Emma, why don't you tell us, tell us about your year, tell us how farming's going and um, if give us give us all the goodies. Okay, where do I where do I start? Tell you about my year. Um, it's it's been an exciting year. It's been a fun year. We've transitioned to real, which has been exciting and crazy all at once. Um, we, gosh, well, we've been everywhere, right? I've been in real estate for eighteen years. So you know, started out Century Twenty One, did the whole like training new agent program, which was super successful. Never got a yellow jacket, but it was a really good experience. <laughs> and um, then went to a small boutique and got into short sales and foreclosures when the market was crazy, 2008, 9, 10. Um, and then decided I wanted to be a broker and be crazy and start my own brokerage. So I experimented with that for a while. And um, then when Compass came in, we sold our brokerage to Compass, which was an exciting time and another shift in the market and change. Um, Got to live with Compass through COVID and have that wild roller coaster all the way up. Um, and then this January, we decided to join Real and try something new again, which has been a really refreshing, exciting, rejuvenating experience for us. So we're we're off to a, a great 2023. I guess we're already almost in, in Q4 next week, but we're, yeah. we're having a fun year. We've been experimenting with a lot of things, trying new marketing, seeing what works. And, you know, as like heavy farmers, it's always fun to get to reintroduce yourself. So this has been great for, you know, trying out some new branding things, trying out some new marketing tools, and it's been a great year. I definitely, I will not lie, obviously our numbers are off because, well, it's 2023 and it's just been a wild ride. So the great news is that by making the shift to real, we've been able to um, keep our, you know, keep our commissions high and keep our, you know, take home really, our profits have been great. But um, definitely our numbers are off from where we normally are. So that's been a new experience because we've only, you know, grown year over year since we started right. the team back in 2014. And so this has been a new challenge for us, but I'm certainly up for the challenge and highly competitive. So give me, a, you know, give me something hard and I'll figure out how to solve it. So that's where we are right now. <laughs> I love that. And honestly, I mean, we're all going through such a hard time right now with, the way real estate's going, I mean, halfway through the year, we are down, what, 60,000 agents, you know, it's yeah. really tough out there. And I mean, that's kind of the reason why I want to do this podcast, because I want to be able to add those bites of value out to agents that maybe just don't have the right information to be successful. Right. And you are highly, highly successful when it comes, you and your partner, Brian, um, who will be interviewing about uh, investments in a couple of weeks, uh, yeah. are just the go-to farmers for farming, even for even for Tom Ferry, if Tom Ferry wants to talk about farming, he talks to Emma. It's 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 amazing. So, it's you know I'm so happy that you're here, and I really just want to know. So let's start with when you first got. When did you first get into farming, and how long have you been in the business again? So uh, 18 years in the business. It okay. was licensed in 2004 and kind of got started in 2005. So. Um, I can't believe it's been 18 years. So it's amazing. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. I think <laughs> crazy. No, that's awesome. That's amazing. <laughs> um, so farming was a natural place to start for me because I knew that I wanted to build up my real estate business in the area that I lived in, which is Scripps Ranch in San Diego. So I, that was how I started my business was farming. Now, of course, I wasn't consistent through all 18 years, or I certainly would be on top of the world. Um, <laughs> so what I've learned from this process of start and stop, start and stop, try something new, try something different, switch over to email, stop doing mailing, um, is that the only way to be successful in farming is to be consistent. And you really have to pick that you know, niche market, whatever that'll be, whether it's where you live or where you want to sell homes. Um, and then you have to dial yourself into ideally a place where there's good turnover, which of course in 2023, there's no good turnover anywhere, but maybe three to 4%. We used to look for like 6%, but that doesn't even <laughs> exist anymore. No, not right <laughs> People now. People <laughs> are not moving at the rate that they were. So at the time that I started farming in Scripps Ranch, I had started with just 200 homes, just one community, one pocket, and then 
what, you know, through coaching and through training and getting to listen to podcasts like yours, learning that be consistent two to three times a month, ideally try to be present in the farm. Don't just pick a farm, start sending stuff out, but then never actually go there, never actually be present, never hang out at the local schools or the park or hold an event. You know, there's so much more to farming than just sending, you know, a piece of you know, a magazine in the mail, like this alone is not going to bring you business. It has to be a layering effect. There has to be branding. So for us, it's been, you know, it took years. I will say probably the first three to five years, I was just mailing a just sold postcard, a just lifted postcard, an occasional market update. And that alone would bring me an occasional client one or two a year that came from marketing and farming. But it really didn't take off until we got super consistent. And so that's two to three pieces a month, bringing value and also layering in the neighborhood. So supporting the local schools, having events for the community, whether that be an ice cream truck party or sponsoring the concert in the park, which we do every summer, all of those additional layers. You go to the grocery store, you see our branding. When you first walk in the grocery store, we're on the hand sanitizer wipes little <laughs> cart there when you walk in Perfect. so it's it's that layering and branding every school in the community has our banner up front and center when you drive into the school so you can't really show up in Scripps Ranch and not know who Emma and Brian are because we are, we try to be everywhere and that's that's the goal and I think this actually came from like very early Brian Buffini type coaching that was like you know, be the mayor of your neighborhood like make sure you show up everywhere and everyone knows who you are Obviously, that takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. It definitely took me 10 10 years to really get to a place where everyone who, you know, who I get to meet or who I, you know, run into at the grocery store is like, oh, you sell homes. Right. Like, that's what I do. And just, (laughs) you know, no, everyone knows that you're the salesperson for homes in the neighborhood. Um, It takes time, but it it's a layering effect. So one thing alone won't do it. It has to be, you know, repeated over time. And, And you said this word, I think, three times during that that answer. And it was the word consistency. And I want to know why you, obviously I, I, consistency is key. Um, and I have, I have my beliefs on why, but I'm curious, why is consistency so important when it comes so, to touching your, your farm? Absolutely. So there's always a new shiny person in the neighborhood selling homes, right? And right now in our neighborhood, we're seeing shockingly open doors resurfaced in our neighborhood. Like there's always going to be some new shiny branding that comes into the neighborhood or an agent who decides suddenly to create a farm or suddenly to send out a a postcard. You need to be right there with it because you can so quickly be forgotten, right? Like these, the, the marketing ends up in the trash can or the recycling bin nine out of 10 times. People don't even look at it or read it. But I assure you when they're on their way walking to the trash can, they're looking at your magazine, they're looking at your branding, they have to at least pick it up from the doormat to take it to the trash can. But if you stop showing up, if you stop sending those things, someone new is going to take your place and show up. And then that's the last person who they remember. So we were at a Tom Ferry conference last week. And one of the things he said is that home sellers list with the the agent who is in the closest proximity. I think it was like 62% of home sellers, and it's a a stat from NAR, list with the agent that is closest to them, whether that's closest, like they can reach the magnet on their fridge and have the name on it, or the chip clip in their pantry, or their neighbor next door, or the person who's been hitting them over the head on Facebook, whatever that proximity means to them, that's the person they call to sell their home with. Wow. And that's 62%. It's huge. It's a staggering, staggering stat. And we also know that a huge amount of clients don't use the same agent on their second transaction. They literally forget you. It's crazy. You would think you're involved in the biggest purchase they ever make. They would certainly know your name and number and save it in their phone. They don't. They literally forget you. And they will work with the person at the open house. And it's like so shocking, but we know this information, we have this data. So we need to remember it when we're, you know, when we're out there marketing, the person who is closest gets the business. So you have to be consistent. You just, you have to stay in proximity and be top of mind, whether it's through social media, which I love everything you're doing on social, obviously is huge because you're top of mind for the people who follow you on social. Now, if you took a week off and went on vacation, people would miss you. And then the second week, they would literally, unfortunately, forget you, right? Like they notice you're gone and then they would forget that you were ever there because someone else's podcast is showing up on their feed, right? Like it can't stop. We just, unfortunately, 
<laughs> no, no, you're totally right. And I, and I, when I, when I got back into the business, um, you know, I remember talking to you. So I established my farm in um, Carmel Valley yeah. and it's so interesting because I'm using the company called Corfac, um, <laughs> Corfac. Yeah. They're amazing. Oh yeah. And they, I have people literally scanning the QR code to check their home value all the time. And, you know, they're getting two of those from me a month, Perfect. um, you know, separate, but, uh, and that's, that's what I'm excited to talk to you about because I know that you throw amazing farm events. You have the entire community come together and that's something that, you know, my coach is really pushing that I start doing. And he literally says, call Emma, find out exactly how she does it and just do exactly what she's doing. You know? So, I mean, I, I think it's really important that people know that it's not just sending a flyer once a month or once a quarter. I'm doing twice a month. Um, you know, I'm starting to understand that you have to, like she said, be completely immersed in the environments. You have to be yes. their neighbor. You have to see them personally all over the place and be consistent. Because I, b- I believe consistency builds trust, yes. right? If they keep seeing you show up and you're not a random person coming into their mail, they're going to be like, oh yeah, no, no, no. Emma, that's right. No, she's she's our realtor. She's the one that sells in our neighborhood, right? So, and I they feel yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it does, I love that it does build trust because they start to associate you with real estate and the neighborhood, real estate in the neighborhood, and then they just keep seeing you over and over again. So that when it, that idea finally occurs to them, they want to sell their home. The first person they think of should be you. Yes, that's the, amazing. The last guy who sent the last postcard. You don't. That's want amazing. To and I love that you're being consistent, Jared, because I remember we talked about this and Corfact is a great company because it's a set and forget system where you basically tell them what you want, where you want it to go, and they send it out for you. There's a ton of other companies that do similar stuff. Corfact has that great back end, which, which we used to use and I love, um, that we use the Neighborhood Connection. That's one of the ones that we use, which is also great. I and mean, they're not cheap. So like if you can no. find someone to sponsor with you, a lender, a, some other type of partner who can do it with you, it's great because it can get costs and might not be where you want to start, you know, with super expensive glossy magazines. But if you can even keep it small, and I know we talked about this too, like start with a hundred homes, start with a condo complex, start with something small and manageable. So you're not spending thousands of dollars a month, right? Like our budget now, I think Brian and I probably spend about 15,000 a month on print marketing. So it's outrageous, right? It's a huge amount of money, but obviously for us, it was a scaling. We didn't start oh, there. We started with 200 and then we went to 400 and then 600 and then a thousand and then 2000. And we've just been slowly increasing every year so that we finally got to the whole zip code of 12,500, but that's certainly not where you start. And if you did, you would go bankrupt because there's also a, a lead time, right? It takes, we know this probably nine to 12 months before yeah. you actually get a listing from your farming. Like that's how long it takes. If you're consistently farming two to three times a month on dripping on the same neighborhood, nine to 12 months before someone calls and says, Hey, Jared, I'd like to list my home in Carmel Valley with you. Like it, it literally takes that long and it's hard to be consistent like that and spending all the money until you start to see the results. But you have to know that if you wait it out, it's going to happen. No, I, you're totally right. It's it's funny because I remember you helped me form my 250 home farm in Carmel Valley. And uh, I mean, even with 250, you're still spending close to $700 a month um, just oh yeah. touching them twice, twice a month with just that. But the, even the first six months of doing that, I didn't get a single person that, you know, even scanned to check their home value. And now I have, I think a total of five or six people that keep going back in to see if it's changing with the way that the market's going. So it's yeah. re- they might be realtors. I don't know, but it's That's really okay. interesting. It's, it's really cool. <laughs> They're possibly future clients. And truthfully, even if one of them lists their home and you, that would pay for the whole year, right? Oh like, my God. Yes. Well, $1 million home in there and the commission check is $25,000 It more than pays for the $750 a month that you're spending. So as long as the juice is worth the squeeze, right? That's one of Brian's favorite expressions. That yeah. I think <laughs> I, I've stolen it, but I think that's the key with marketing, right? As long as you, you have to know your ROI, you have to understand it, but as long as you're what you're putting out will come back in later. There's a waiting game. Then you're going to be thrilled with the results. And our ours is probably a like a three to five x return on our print marketing. I 
we could do more, right? We could pick up another zip code and start doing the same marketing in another zip code. The one thing I would lose with that, and so people keep asking, why don't you start another, you know, move up to Rancho Penicitos or move over to, you know, down to Tierra Santa. So that layering impact that we're doing in Scripps Ranch would be really hard for us to replicate with our, with just the two of us in right. another neighborhood, right? Like we live, breathe, sleep, work, eat in our zip code. So our office is here. Our kids go to school here. We are literally in immersed in the community, which is how we have, you know, 40% market share in our farm is because we're immersed. We could be 40% that market market share. 40% market share. You guys have 40% market share. That's amazing. Most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> most most of the um but if you if we picked up and tried to move to another zip code we would really need to figure out a team member obviously to immerse themselves in that community right. to re replicate what we do in ours because it doesn't it's not just a one and done or set and forget system it's so much more than that and that's what i think we talk about farming on like a very like simple level is just sending out mailers, but there's yeah. so much more, right? There's the email component, there's the social media component, and there's the in-person events, uh, which I'm always happy to chat with you about doing the events, like the black parties, the concert in the park, the movie in the park, all of those cool things. You have to be a hundred percent in, right? You can't just be like a little bit interested in it. You have to be a hundred percent committed to it. No, I, I absolutely agree with you. And, and, and that's something that I've come to realize, you know, cause I, I took your advice. I went small. And then you doubled every year, basically, right? So if you know, yeah. I would have in the big years. yeah. So that that's basically the, years I'm, the market would do well. <laughs> Yeah, baby steps. We we won't be doubling in twenty twenty three. We're not going from fifteen thousand to thirty thousand. I can assure no, you. That's a lot. Um, not not while the inventory is so far down, but probably in the next couple of years, we you know we will double because that's how you scale, right? That's how you grow the business, and then. For us to also grow the team and you know be able to grow the opportunities for the team so that's yeah. where we are no i think that's incredible and then when did you do you do you remember when you received your first commission check from your farm it's funny it was just actually i just did a follow-up yesterday so so my morning routine is always following up with my sellers and past past buyers or past sellers and, you know, making my 20 calls. And I called yesterday a client who was my first ever sale. And that was different because that came from sitting in an open house in San Carlos at one of my mom's listings. It was a one bedroom, one bath, 600 square foot condo in San Carlos in 2005. And yesterday I called that seller. I don't know that I've talked to him since 2005. So that's a little embarrassing. Oh, wow. But the good news was he remembered me. And I called him, I was sitting out, we have like a, you know, bullpen in our office. You've been here, Jared, but we have the bullpen. So sitting out in the bullpen, making calls because that motivates the team and it motivates me. And I couldn't believe he answered. I know he was probably at work and I was like, hey, Eugene, it's Emma Lefkowitz. I don't know if you remembered me, but I represented you on the purchase of your condo. And he's like, of course I do. How are you? He was so happy <laughs> to hear from me. I'm like, why don't I call more people? Like, this is so fun. <laughs> that was my first sale. Um, and he still lives there, which is amazing in this little one, one in St. Wow. Carlos. Um, but it was, that was, I remember that because I remember handwriting the contract because I'm that old and he came back with me to my century 21 office and we filled out the contract by hand. And then I went and dropped it off to the seller's agent. So very fun reminiscing yesterday that we just did. Um, my first sale on the farm, gosh, it probably could have been like my own house. Cause you know, we always like to sell our own house. That's always a good way to get our right. sign out in the front yard. I always want to put my, I just want to put my sign out. Um, I don't remember, Jared. I feel terrible. I don't remember. But no, I, no, it's okay. <laughs> I definitely remember anytime, and still to this day, anytime someone calls, like, so we send these out every month. And okay. anytime someone calls and says, I got your magazine, and I just wanted to call and find out how much my home is worth. I literally, like, throw a little party because I'm so excited because it's like, oh, it's working. It's working. You know, like, it, it's the best feeling and it doesn't, you know, maybe it's once a month we get a call from the magazine and then once every three months, it actually turns into an actual listing. That's but amazing. It, it's so fulfilling. It is like the best thing that happens in my whole year. Oh, I love that. Just hearing the words, yeah. I got your magazine. That's like, yeah, that's right. I send magazines out. I mean, that's yeah. so cool, right? I'm at, post, I'm at postcards, but I'll get there. Uh, you will get there. We started with postcards. I <laughs> will definitely a get there. A little magazine it was like a brochure right like four pages and then it went to eight pages and then 16 and now we're at, i think it's 32 but it definitely wow. you know it takes time and like it's not yeah it is it's 32 pages 
Um, but we have our lender co-sponsor here, right? Like you, you don't do it alone. You do it with, of course. Um, with and, I, and I should find somebody to help me do that because I know you, you've mentioned that already today is make sure you have someone to help, you know, subsidize yeah. the cost for the marketing because it is, it's, 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 you know, it's expensive. It's expensive and it keeps getting more expensive. I mean, the cost of right. postage goes up all the time. So it, it keeps getting more expensive. And interestingly, I feel like less and less people are sending mail. Like my mailbox, I don't know if you notice this, but my mailbox is less full than it used to be. Oh, same here. Are, businesses are cutting back. So if yeah. they're going to cut back, we should do more, right? Like it's an opportunity for us to get in front of more mailboxes and have more of an opportunity to hit those sellers because they'll have less things to throw out on their way. No, you're absolutely right. And that makes it non-negotiable. I mean, I, I, when I, at the house that we're currently in, which we're selling and we're moving, um, we'll be closer to you. So we're excited. Closer to us. Yay. <laughs> um, you know, I, when I first moved in here, I, I was probably getting three or four pieces a week. Um, and, mm -hmm. and that was about two and a half years ago. And now maybe I get one piece a month. So it's wow. it's completely come down, which is so interesting. And um, I think it speaks to the market, right? Like less agents, less business. It's yeah, tough. It's, it's tough. tough. And less both Right. Well, so and you guys it, are smart. It, you guys built a bigger team. Right. Right. Very smart. So I noticed that as soon as things got thing. rough, people started coming into the, I, I, was, I was like, oh, wow, they really have a lot of Asians coming on the team, which, which is brilliant, like, obviously. Are these people? Yeah. I, I mean, I like, I know Jen. And then I'm just like, yesterday right. I was at your office and I was just meeting everybody and I was like, oh, this is great. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, and that was, that's it, right. It's, it, it's on purpose, right? It was done with, with intention because of course. we know that agents are struggling right now and we know that we have tools to help them so that's first of all but second of all we still have listings we have opportunities for them to have open houses and to do you know to market our properties and it's great for us right like because we know a rising tide floats all boats so the more business that comes in the more opportunities that comes in we're all going to rise up together um exactly. it's honestly it's part of why we join real it's the same mentality right like it's like if we all help each other we're all going to do better and do bigger and do more so that's kind of what why we started to really grow the team this last few months because it's like why not like we we have the opportunity and with everyone that we help obviously we benefit in a small way and it it just you know it's it, the most fulfilling thing is to help someone else create success i it, it took me a long time to understand that and that's been a huge shift for us which is part of joining and you know that's one thing that um, I absolutely I love about real too. Yeah. Sorry, you broke it's, up there. You're saying really something. nice atmosphere. No, I wanted to show you. This is my favorite page in the magazine. So this is so this is our pet of the month page, and we've oh had gosh. birds and cats and pigs and all kinds of animals that people send into us. So at the bottom is is our email, and people can submit a photo of their pet every month. People send and people do that. They do, because who doesn't want their pet to be in the magazine? Like, look at these two cuties. Um, so That's this adorable. is my favorite thing. It's so funny. Of all the things that could come out of, of farming, I love that people will text me and email me photos of their pet. I think and that is such a so fun cute, idea. Because they want the featured. It is. So <laughs> That's my favorite. That's my favorite marketing is the pet. And let yeah, me ask you, what you what do you do for holidays? Do you have like a special thing you like doing for holidays? And how many holidays should somebody who's farming a community, um, you know, do something special for? So we try to do quarterly because it's about all we can handle. If you can do monthly pop buys for holidays, if you keep your farm smaller or your sphere smaller, then I think monthly is amazing because there's certainly one holiday a month. But if you're if you're doing it on a larger scale, then quarterly is great because there's great holidays every quarter. So like our last one was July 4th and we did pinwheels, little American flag pinwheels. Oh, yeah. Branded with our little labels. I wish I had one to show you, but they've disappeared and um, branded with our labels. And we gave those out at the 4th of July parade. So we marketed before that, like, hey, come find us at the 4th of July parade. We'll be on this corner at this time we have free pin pinwheels for the whole community and um, just gave out pinwheels and then of course as we're driving through the neighborhood over the next few days people are sticking them in their lawn you're seeing them so it's that was super cute we used to do flags and we 
found that other people started to do flags. So then we yeah. had to spice it up and switch to pinwheels. So you kind of got to get creative and, and you can't do the same thing every year is what we've learned. You have to be, you know, obviously constantly inventing new ideas. Um, our next one is Thanksgiving. So Popeye's for with pies. So okay. we used to deliver pies to our top 50 A-list clients. Now we've done, we've switched to the reverse Popeye where people actually come to the office and pick up their pie the week of Thanksgiving. So that way we can serve that many more clients. So reverse And, and did Popeye, you do that last year? We, I don't think we did it last year. I think the last time we did it was two years ago. So we got okay. a little thrown off with COVID and yeah, then with course. changing offices. That was the other problem. Now we have our big, beautiful new office. So we're, we'll have it here in our new office this year. And people will come by the week of Thanksgiving and pick up their pies. So that is that's so cool. So we do it Tuesday, Tuesday before Thanksgiving. So the pies are fresh and people will come by and pick up and they get a choice of, you know, apple, pecan or pumpkin. And it's such that we have usually we have champagne or like cider so that they can come in and have a drink, stick around for a little while, chat with them. They pick up their pie and they go, everyone loves a free pie. It's like a total oh. winning opportunity. So. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But so here I have a fun question. Yeah. If you were to, let's say that you were to start from ground zero in a new neighborhood, yeah. what would be the first five things that you do in that neighborhood to establish your farm? If I started, so if I picked up tomorrow and moved to like Coeur d'Alene, then I would have to figure out how to be a farmer in Idaho. So what would I do? So first of all, I, again, start small, right? I would start with the little community that I live in. So my house and my surrounding 100 or 200, depending on how close together they are, houses. Um, one thing that I have actually done, you'll laugh, and, my, and Eric and I did this together, is we made a little survey for our neighbors. We moved into our new house that was like, hey, we're a little half sheet piece of paper. Hey, we're new in town, we're new in the neighborhood. We're excited to be here with our small, you know, young kids. And we're looking for information from the neighbors as to the best place to get pizza. Where do I take the dry cleaning? You know, do you have a great resource for a gardener? And, you know, some other questions. We asked like four or five questions in a survey. And we literally put it in the mailboxes of everyone on the surrounding neighborhood. So A, it was attached to get to introduce ourselves. We didn't talk about real estate. We didn't, you don't talk about business, right? It's purely social getting to know people. You ask them questions, then they have to come back to your house and drop it off. So obviously you get to meet them when they come back or they leave it in the mailbox. But that's a super fun way to, first of all, get to know the neighbors, get to meet people. And especially as a realtor, like make friends. So it's, it's a good start. So that's number one, meet the neighbors, get to know the friends have a block party. So we throw block parties for all of our clients when they move into their new house. It's the easiest thing. We keep it super simple. We order a pizza or get some tacos, throw up our pop-up tent outside the house, maybe get a jumpy if it's ideal and the conditions support it and have a, a little block party, serve a couple bottles of wine and some sparkling water and get some Capri Suns for the kids. Throw a block party, again, meet the neighbors, make friends. That, that's super simple. We And I have a SOP if you want on block parties. So oh my gosh, we also please. have one on client events I can share with you. So yes. Yeah, Brian has, you know, operationalized everything we do. So everything is written down for block parties, uh, pop buys, all of that. Um, and then you start a little postcard campaign, right? You start small, just like you did. A core fact or a, a neighborhood connection, or you can obviously do it by yourself. There's no reason not to. Market update postcards. So Everyone wants to know the value of their home. They like recipes. They like word searches. They like head of the month. But what they really want is a CMA. They want to know the value of their home. There's no better postcard, no better mailer for us than CMA. It is the number one thing people request. Wow. So, so while we've had other very successful postcards, I will tell you our probably number one ever postcard that we got feedback on was we did like the summer Olympic schedule and people kept it. <laughs> they oh, wanted that's to know amazing. When the Olympics were on TV. So that was probably our best postcard ever that we people called and said, can I get another Olympic schedule postcard? Like people requested more. So funny. But CMA, CMA all day, keep sending CMAs. People love those. Then obviously that gets stale and you have to mix it up and do some other stuff because you have to do more than one thing, more, more than one trick. But that's, those are the, the, those, that's where I'd start. I would literally do those few steps and then repeat, 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 right? Like as, as often as possible. I, and then grow. Amazing. So 200 homes, 400 homes, 600 homes. 
And then every time you get a listing, Jared, you know, that's like a golden opportunity to create a new market opportunity for you, create a farm around that listing and, you know, door knock, invite everyone to the open house, have some wine and cheese at the open house. You, you do all these things. So you know exactly what I mean, but it's absolutely creating opportunity to create a new market with a listing. Yeah, no, I think that's, that's huge. And, uh, and now that you brought that up, it makes me think about it. You know, like I, I, I have trouble door knocking, you know, I get in my head about it. You know, I get to that door, I get a little sweaty and I realized, you know, having listings and having that reason to go knock on the neighbor's doors to invite them over for live music and food and beverages really makes that a lot easier. But we still yeah. have the problem Definitely. as new farmers where it's really hard to just commit to going once a week or once a month to knock on, you know, 50 to a hundred doors. So if somebody was afraid of doing that, if they had a fear of, you know, a limiting belief or something, what would you tell that agent on your team to really help them just kind of get over that and pursue those doors? So door knocking is hard and I actually don't like it either. Unless I have a message, if I have something to say, and something to invite people to, that's obviously so much easier. So the wine and cheese open house is like a perfect opportunity to door knock because you get to invite them to something. And who doesn't like to be invited to a party? So the message, you first of all script it, right? You write it down before you go like, hi, I'm Emma Lefkowitz with the Baron team at Real. I'm actually listing a home right around the corner from you over here on Hito Street. And we're going to be having a wine and cheese neighborhood preview on Friday night from four to six. We're inviting all the neighbors to come and see the house before we open it up to the public so that you get a chance to poke around and not feel like a nosy neighbor. We really want <laughs> you to come and have a glass of wine with us on a Friday afternoon and, you know, join us. Oh, you don't want to come? No worries at all. We just wanted to let you know, we apologize for the cars that are going to be on the street. It might be a little busy. Um, so we apologize for it. It'll just be two hours and then hopefully all the noise will go away. So thanks so much. Have a great day. Script. <laughs> right? Amazing. You got to know what you're going to say before you get to the door. Practice it on camera, right? Do a little, you know, like little like selfie action, like watch yourself a video, see how it goes, you know, role play with a friend or a partner, make sure you get all the objections worked out. And then you go do it. And the more you do it, you know, say, you know, like everything in life, the more you practice, the easier it gets. It's oh, basically yeah. like practicing on neighbors before you practice on the buyers right then saturday when the buyers come you're all warmed up and ready to like you know do the objection handlers because you practice on the neighbors so no i love what that I do. line it takes a while to warm up. yeah yeah and i love that line oh, I'm, i want to apologize for all the cars parked on the street because <laughs> this is going to be a big deal because that's what we do <laughs> gonna be busy yeah because we bring a lot of people out to open houses and they're gonna be like what do you mean a lot of cars well i mean when we have an open house, we put out 25 signs. We usually get about 50 to 100 people. So sorry, there's going to be a lot of traffic. There might be some noise, but we'll try to keep it down. And, you know, it'll only be for a couple hours and we'll be out of your hair. So you're getting to like kind of double message there. Like we're really good at what we do. We bring in a lot of people and most people are shocked. They're like, what do you mean there's going to be 50 people? Well, yeah, like we're throwing a party in your neighbor's house because we want to make sure we get as much exposure as possible. So wow. the goal, obviously, is to pick up more listings. Yeah. I, no, you're absolutely right. That's the end goal. And, you know, it really, it's, it's, I feel like it's, I hear so many experienced real estate agents that get asked the question, like, if you were to go back 10 years ago and start from scratch, what would you do? I want to say about 90% of the people I hear that get asked that question say, establish a farm. Mm -hmm. because it's it's one of those things in real estate that you can technically be mostly hands off with that's going to continuously bring you income over the years your soi and your farm and if you can master those two things you won't work a day in your life oh, not i shouldn't say that you you won't have to you won't have to worry about you know going broke basically business. exactly you're right. going to have a massive influx of business yeah so, so SOI, that's a great topic too, Jared, is you, you can't just go out and 
have open houses and have events, you also have to capture the data, right? You need to capture the information people are giving you. If they're signing in on your sign-in sheet at your open house, if you're collecting somehow information from running contests or having events in the farm and people are giving you their names and numbers, those have to go in your database. And yeah. that, if you ask me what mistake I made and what I wish I had done sooner, is have a CRM, right? Like it probably took me years. I didn't even know what CRM stood for for the first five years I was in real estate. Now I'm religious about putting every piece of data, birthdays, anniversaries, the name of the kids, whatever information I get from clients, from people I meet at open houses and from people in the farm goes into the CRM because that is the gold at the end of the day, right? Like that's yeah. the exit strategy is you have to have that database. You have to know who your people are and you have to be able to contact them. So if you don't collect phone numbers or emails, you have no way to in the future follow up with these people. And that's, I wish I had started that sooner. That's the one thing I, I could honestly say the mistake I made at the beginning was I wasn't good about collecting people's information and putting it into a nice consolidated place where I would then be able to follow up in the future and, and go back and call them. So no, that's, I, that's, that's amazing. I mean, and the great thing about being at real is we have access to chime which is mm -hmm. normally what, $400 a month. And we have it for 40, yes. which is incredible. That's right. And yeah. I noticed yesterday, you're in all your entire team, when I walked into your guys' uh, meeting room, everybody was on Chime. And I even saw the yeah. calendar and even you guys even have specific days where you actually go through Chime with everybody, which is yeah. incredible. And, yeah. you know, it's really funny. I was always, I, I actually thought about it. I was like, can you ever sell your real estate business? Like, can you sell your business and retire? And it seems as if the only way that you can really sell your real estate business is if you have a very well-established CRM that's organized because at the end of the day, that's pretty much what you're selling, right? Yep. It's your, it's your book of business. It's like exactly. any other industry for an insurance salesperson or a dentist or any other profession when they want to retire or sell their business, it's their book of business. And our CRM is our book of business. And I think as a early realtor starting out, I, did not understand that we even had a book of business. Like I didn't understand that that concept hadn't been yet, you know, Tom Ferry drilled into my brain. I, know, right? <laughs> I understand like the importance of the CRM and keeping information about your clients. But now I see clear as day. Like, like if, if I was retiring, which not quite yet, but when <laughs> when they would love to retire, the value that I bring to give to another realtor or a, a broker or someone who would want to take over my business is being able to give them my database, right? Being able to sell that because that's that's the gold. That's the where all the business is done is in the database. So although we do get a lot of new business from marketing, the only way to repeat, rinse and repeat, is that the expression? Is to, oh, is yeah. to be able to contact the people you've already worked with who already know, like, and trust you. You just have to stay in touch with them. So that's... That's obviously the the one thing that I wish I'd started sooner is keeping that database. Now, of course, I do it at a super high level. And that's why we're training our team on Chime once a week is you, the first of all, there's always new tools being added in there. And it's such a, yeah. you know, such a very, very in-depth CRM. There's so much you could do with it, but at the very minimum, an Excel spreadsheet, right? Somewhere that you're just keeping names, emails, and phone numbers so that you have, you know, the opportunity to stay in touch with people who you've already made a relationship with. And you guys have multiple assistants that are actually helping you and Brian manage your CRM. And that's one thing I think a lot of agents, you know, newer two years in the business think, okay, I need to get uh, some type of assistant to help me do this when maybe they're managing one closing every two months, three months. But I mean, I feel like it's important for people to understand. You just need to use a C get a CRM that you're actually going to use. If it's the simplest thing in the world where it's yes. literally just notes, their contact information, if you're going to do it, then just do that one. And when you get to a level like Emma and Brian, where they're, oh my God, you guys closed how many transactions? You guys 200? Is it 200 this year so far? 200, mm -hmm. 200 yeah. transactions this year, which is, which is, which is just amazing. Then, you know, that is a time when even if you're at like 50 to hundred a year, you can start transitioning to actually bringing somebody onto your team like Emma and Brian did. I think total, you guys have what with assistance and everything was like 15, is it 50, is it more than 15? What is it on your team? On our team, so so this is a good question and it's evolving. We have <laughs> I know. about twenty agents. We have about twenty agents on our team. We have two full time administrators in our office, a 
transaction manager and an operations manager. Um, and then we actually have four full-time virtual assistants who help us in the back background who do help us with transaction transaction coordination, help us with marketing, graphic design, um, database obviously is a huge one, and then also all of the administrative tasks that go along with running a large team. So course, we didn't start there, right? We started with one assistant who did all, who wore all of those hats and we totally wore that poor person down. But, you know, you start small with one person and then you obviously grow into it as you get busier. But I cannot say how amazing virtual, virtual assistants are amazing. And we've had such a pot, you know, such a positive experience with our virtual assistants. And, you know, you really can find someone who, if their only job is really to help you manage your database and, you know, organize it, help you to add people there's so much value to help you with your database because you could add everyone in your farm and then you could do email marketing with them and you could add them to your social media channels there is so much potential for how you can do it of course you have to operationalize the plan and make a plan before you hire someone but there is so much possibility with that so highly recommend looking into virtual assistants especially if hiring an assistant seems like a a big stretch because it's a full-time you know, person you need to budget into your life. But if a virtual assistant's available, even if it's part-time to help you with your database, that is an amazing hire. No, I agree with you 100%. And you and Brian are what every real estate agent in the industry aspires to be. I mean, you guys have built an actual business. You're not just, you know, real estate agents out there focusing on just, you know, closing your deal, getting a buyer. You guys have literally built a business around real estate that from what I understand stretches beyond the buyer and seller experience at this point, you know, you guys are involved in investing and everything else. And, um, you know, it's really great for people to see the end result because I feel like we're all focused on this really quick and fast turnover. And when it comes to farming, I feel like it's the most reliable source of, you know, a, a prospecting pillar you can have in real estate, but, people just don't have the patience to become Emma Lefkowitz because it's so, it takes so much time, you know? It does. does. You have to be committed to it. Cause it's not, like I said, at the beginning, we talked about like, you can't just send out one thing a month and then be done and stop. Right. And it, it does, it takes a lot of time and effort. Even like, you know, even with all the support I have, I still go through every page of this every month before it goes out. Like I, well, I'm a perfectionist. I'd make everyone crazy, but I literally do the CMA myself that goes in here because I want to make sure the data, like the data needs to be accurate because this is what people rely upon. And this is what people love. Like they want to see active pending sold. That's what they want to know. And I want to make sure it's right. Cause if it's going to have my name on it, it has to be perfect. I, I check that every month and it, yes it takes hours but it's essential because you want it to be a good product because people aren't going to call you if there's a bunch of mistakes and it's not accurate data so it is a time investment and it's a financial investment but everything you keep saying is true if you put in the time and the effort and the money it will be a long-term benefit to your business it will be a pillar that you can rely upon over a, a lifetime if you decide to commit to it because these people will continue to hear from you over and over again and come to like you, know you, and trust you just because they get your, you know, your marketing in the mail. Um, I can tell you, I have walked, this is my favorite thing. I've walked into homes that probably haven't sold for 20 or 30 years. And all of them have a notepad by their telephone (laughs) from a realtor. Oh gosh, I don't have any realtor notepads. I still have I still have realtor notepads if you can believe it. But you know, a notepad with a realtor's face on it and a magnet on the fridge with another realtor's face <laughs> on it, right? Like these are things people keep for like long periods of time. And maybe, you know, maybe the chip clip, maybe the, you know, coffee mug with the yeah. realtor's all those things that realtors have been doing farming for, you know, Ever. forever, forever in different ways, shapes, and forms. And it's still a tried and true successful method to sell homes. So I, I can't think of any greater way to invest your money than in a farm. If so let me ask you money. one last question about that. So we talked about investing money, but now let's say a brand new agent comes in who's turning their life around, getting away from the nine to five, and all they have is sweat equity at the moment to spend on um, building their farm. What do you suggest this agent do? Because obviously now we're talking about a lot of personal time being consumed by doing this farm, maybe for the first year. So what, if you wanted to touch these people three times a month, 
would you suggest what would you suggest this agent that really can't spend the money right now Absolutely. to do that? Absolutely. Yeah. So that's a great question. So first of all, join a team, right? Leverage a team because they're, you know, there's so much more success available when you're on a team. You just have some you unlock possibilities, right? And and especially if you can find a team in your farm, in the area that you want to work in, because then they'll potentially have listings that you can hold open, that you have more opportunities to get in front of more buyers and sellers in a neighborhood. So that's number one. Join a team. Like don't this is real estate is no longer a solo sport. It is absolutely a team sport. And a team will always outperform the individual. So why would you try to do it by yourself? Agreed. Right? Like join a team. Get in a network in whatever way, shape or form. I talk about sweat equity all the time with my team. And we just had a training on Tuesday where we we were doing role playing and scripting. And they say exactly what you said. What do I say when I knock on the door? Because door knocking, obviously, free cert, free thing you can do is door knock. And you can door knock the same 25 doors once a month and have the same results as if you're sending a mailer once a month, right? So if you can print a flyer at your office or make a cute little, I mean, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. It can literally be like a, Here's that, you know, an MLS printout with some home values and let's go talk about those. Um, and you can go door to door, have your script, have your lines practice, be prepared, know what you're going to say. If you can get an open house in that neighborhood, even better. Now you have something to invite them to. It doesn't have to be your listing. It doesn't matter. It's just an opportunity to invite them to come to the open house. But door knocking is free. It does take time, effort, energy, and a little bit of uh, chutzpah. I don't know. The, the chutzpah, best word I love that. that. <laughs> Okay, so then let's say if somebody I, says, "What if they close the What if they close the door on me, or they tell me not to come back?" That's so yeah, scary. Yeah. I mean, what would you tell that agent then? I mean, you're in sales, so rejection is part of sales, and and we have to have thick skin. Unfortunately, that's what I would say. I know that's like Absolutely. not the answer. No, no. True. Would you encourage them to go back to that house maybe next month, um, or would you have them just avoid it? So it depends on how the conversation goes. If the person says, "Please don't come here again," obviously don't go back. If the person says, "No, I don't want to come to your open." house have a good day and slams the door if you can go back a month later with a new message or bring them a little pumpkin for halloween like right a little gift goes a long way um if you have something new and interesting to share with them you can go back as long as you obviously didn't leave on bad terms but <laughs> we we face a lot of rejection in this business right like yeah. this is this is tough you go on a listing appointment you don't get it you you know show a buyer 10 houses and they end up buying a house at an open house with a random agent like there's a lot of rejection. And so if you don't have that, you know, the thick skin and you, this is a, this is a tough business. Like oh my gosh. every day unemployed. So That's it's exactly, I mean, you have to have thick skin. Door knocking is a whole different animal and not everyone enjoys it. But if you want to be successful and you don't have any money to print out, you know, a thousand pages to go mail then unfortunately door knocking is really where you start and open houses do open houses in your opinion in your opinion with your experience if somebody committed to knocking on a thousand doors over let's say a 10-day period a thousand doors do you think they would come out with a listing if they had a team to let's say they had a team to leverage so they they had they got invited in they scheduled a, a listing pitch thousand doors over a hundred uh, over let's say 10 days do you think that that person would get a listing 100 percent. and so, so right there that that's just yeah. you want money then go and go spend 10 days knocking on doors and you're going to get paid right it's real estate is a numbers game right the more calls you make the more doors you knock on the more people you're in front of the more homes you're going to sell it's absolutely a numbers game so we had our our business coach coach our team a couple of weeks ago. And after the call, we jumped on a call with him and said, so you got to meet the team. Who do you think is going to be the most successful? And who do you think is not going to be successful? And he said, I'll tell you, that girl over there, she's going to be highly successful because she's not afraid of the phone and she's not afraid of rejection. And she understands that if she makes 100 calls, she will convert one into a client. If you can kind of get that into your head very early and not be afraid to jump in, it's all numbers. You don't even have to know what you're going to say, or you don't have to like have something important to share. But if you make a hundred calls, you are going to get one person who says, yeah, actually I am looking for a home. I do want to, you know, can you show me one, two, three main street on Sunday? Like it's numbers. And so the one who 
knocks on the most doors and the one who makes the most calls is going to win. Like it's, yeah. there's, it's right. It's statistics. No, so, you're totally right. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, I guess you just got to kind of convince yourself to focus on the pleasures that are going to come from it. Not necessarily the fears okay. in doing it. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So, oh my you God. To, yeah. You have to prioritize. And I, I'm like the worst. I, it takes me a good hour before I'll start pick up the phone and start making calls. Like I have it's to just like, in your head, like it's yeah, in your head. I have, yeah. to, I have to have three cups of coffee <laughs> and then I have to like, you know, have to run to the bathroom. I have to brush my hair one more time. I have to like, you know, I have to psych myself up, turn on some music. And then finally I'm ready to make my calls. So when I finally make my calls every single time, I'm like, so glad I made my call today. And I have to like, thank my listing manager, Cindy, who's sitting behind me. And she's like, did you make your calls? Did you make your calls? Cause every time I make my calls, something good happens right yeah. something comes out of it so even if it's just a phone call like yesterday when I called Eugene and got to say hi to an old past client like I didn't get a listing but I got to connect with someone who potentially could be a referral source in the future so oh, absolutely it's just you got to make the calls and and you got to knock on the doors or whatever it is that brings you money if it's videos if it's social media if it's podcasts whatever you decide to do but if you don't do it you're certainly not going to get any results no, you're, you're, you're a hundred percent right. And I want to thank you. This has been like, I feel so valuable. It's been valuable for me. First of all, I feel like I just got a coaching session from the Emma Lefkowitz and that's awesome. <laughs> and I I'm really hoping that, you know, over the next three to six months being consistent doing this, that this video will be something that really helps somebody take their business to the next level or get out of a really bad financial, you know, part of their life by yes. getting a real estate license and flourishing early in the game. So um, I want to thank you for helping me do that. Cause oh I know God. that we thank both you, feel Jared. the same way. <laughs> no. And every time I have these conversations, I get something out of it too. And it motivates me to go out and, and help more people and, and do more things. So thank you so much for having me on the podcast. Podcast. This has been super fun. And if you need me, if anyone needs me, reach out on social, give me a call, answer my phone, just let me know how I can be of assistance. That was awesome. Thank you so much, Emma. Of course. Bye. Bye. Oh, you're so awesome. Thank you so much for doing that.